we're going to talk a little bit about open source licensing now, uh, and I'll have the panelists to introduce themselves. Stefano, do you want to start? Hi, I'm Stefano Macfulli, and I've, I've been involved in open source for most of my career, starting as the uh, lead at the Free Software Foundation Europe in Italy um, many eons ago. And then I, I took a break from open source advocacy full time or for nonprofit organizations, uh, working a lot in marketing and, and community management in various open source projects and products backed by corporations. And now I'm the executive director at the Open Source Initiative. And Tom. Hi, my name is Tom Calloway. Uh, people call me Spot. Uh, I uh, have been in open source my entire adult life. I skipped the last day of my junior year of high school to go to Linux Expo, and I have never looked back. Uh, currently, I am an open source evangelist at AWS. Awesome, thanks. So we'll start off with sort of a gentle question. That is just broadly speaking, what are the benefits of open source licenses? I can start and I can say that for me, open source has always been about the simplicity of the adoption of, of software. Um, when I started my career, that's how I realized that software was being distributed with very cumbersome ways. And you had to call a lawyer or a salesperson and have to go through very complex cycles before you could even start using the software. And then you had to ask even for more permissions before you could modify it if it was allowed at all. With open source, basically things started to become a lot clearer and uh, the open source definition defines a set of rights and obligations that you have to have as a user of the software and as a developer and contributor. And that makes things a lot clearer. There is a playing field that is leveled and that everybody can understand very, very easily in, in lay terms. Open source definition really comes defines what open source is. The open source initiatives initiative reviews licenses, reviews the legal text, and and basically says this um, this license carries the values that are in the open source definition, and therefore you you can trust the fact that you can use it and have those rights embedded in the software you're downloading. That's one way to look at it for me. That's a great explanation, Steph. I think that for me, uh, the value of the open source license is to mitigate the risk so that when you put an open source license on a work, you make it clear to everyone from the lawyers to the CFO's office to all of your contributors, you help them to understand what they can and can't do with your software. And open source licenses by nature are very permissive. They grant you a large set of rights that allow you to do things that you can't do with proprietary software. And then from an end user and contributor perspective, sort of generally, what's the impact of software licenses? Well, I think that the impact of software licenses to the end user is really that it empowers you to do whatever you want to do with that software, whether it is simply to use it, which is perfectly fine, or to take it beyond that and say, hey, I would love it if this software had this capacity or this feature, or more likely, I would love it if this software stopped having this particular bug, and I would like to get in there and try and fix it. I think that it creates the opportunity for digital curiosity, for you to learn more about how your computer works and to be able to make it work for you, not just the way that somebody else intended it to. Yeah, that's definitely, it's definitely one of the powerful ways by, by which I got attracted to open source. Um, I, I started by being not a developer um, as an architect and I was playing around with uh, software that was complex and, and difficult to, to acquire at the Joint Research Center at the European Commission as a researcher. And, and um, it, I just had to tinker with the software all the time. And with the proprietary software systems, it was just too complicated. And most of my machines, for example, did not have a C compiler. Um, the fact that I could go on the internet and find the new uh, compiler collection and download it and, and use it to solve my problem as a researcher, it was great. But then going forward in my career, when I started to go more into the marketing, for example, then I still had a lot of value in, in open source and free software because I could rely on a, uh, a wide array of corporations being able to provide support, for example, for different software that I was using. And that's another thing that really uh, open source enables is 
to have a lot of, for the users to have a lot more uh, freedom of choice between the providers of the software and, and the solutions that they need. Provides for uh, a wider array, uh, wider array of competition in the market. And in, in general, it has brought a lot of innovation to like, lots of new product products that have hit the market because software components were already available. So developers at that stage did not have did have a lot of uh, choice and, and to build on top of the giants, shoulders of the giants. So a problem that's come up recently, although it's not at all new, is uh, sort of like what happens when uh, projects that are open source uh, are locked down or made proprietary. Um, so what are the impacts on users and on organizations who are relying on that open source software when it's changed to a proprietary license? Well, that's a very complicated, um, <laughs> complicated scenarios, but in, so we, we talked about how software and open source software enables uh, freedom of choice and, and empowers the users. And when, when as, as a user, I start using software that is licensed under certain conditions, I have certain expectations. When those expectations get removed because the, the original developer and the sole uh, copyright owner of the project removes rights that I assume they have, that is kind of of a betray of of um, of trust, and um, it, and it could be very um, it could be very dangerous and 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 um, um, damaging for for a lot of this different reason. So I remember one of the stories um, for how the OpenStack project started, and it started because one of the it was not a license change but it was basically a, the only owner of the copyright of one of the projects that OpenStack users wanted to use um, had um, before OpenStack existed. Um, th this project would not accept patches because they didn't want, not want to have their software um, offer capabilities that the community wanted. And the, that ended up creating OpenStack as a, as a reaction. Like we, the community and the users needed those features. And instead of having to ask permissions and constantly begging the, the only copyright owner um, to accept patches, they, they went on and created their own, their own software. I would go even farther than that and say that, you know, when, when a project goes from open source away from an open source license, they effectively destroy their community. And I think that the community is one of the huge things that makes open source so special and so wonderful is having an open source community is a statement that says that we, we are open to all ideas, big, small, uh, great and minor, and we want your help to build something wonderful together. And when you take a step away from your community, you're telling them that you don't value their input anymore, that you don't value the opportunity from them to directly contribute, that you are the only one that knows what's right for the software and you will be the one that is right forevermore. And I think that's that's kind of arrogant and short-sighted and it's very disappointing to see projects going in that direction. Uh, I, I really think that this is something that, the irony is that when these things happen, there's almost always a counter reaction of someone taking the last version of that open source project and forking it off and taking it in a new direction. And we've seen multiple times that that has resulted in great innovation and the original project being left far behind. It's a very threatening move that of um, license changes and forks, um, even with the same licenses, they usually have uh, the, the potential to, to split the community and, and um, create problems. But yes, yes, it's true that um, in many times the splits that have, um, ex um, the, the, yeah, the, these forks, some of the forks have thrived. Yeah, I think, um, you know, like that, that benefit of many, many different perspectives, many different ideas is an important part of why open source is so successful. It sort of builds on the licensing, the licensing makes it possible. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? You know, like the community as like a source of rich diversity of ideas, making the software stronger over time. Yeah, it's 
it's something that I have experienced a lot in, in my past years, especially in corporations working for, for for profit corporations, is the 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 kind of um, how difficult it is to implement processes and implement um, uh, systems where collaboration with customers and users can and, and 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 competitors can actually happen. It's hard for a lot of companies to to understand that they can that they can that the licenses allow for a, a community of innovation to happen with your customers and not against them, and. It, it, and it's the, the practice of how to do that, how to achieve that is, is not very well known. Um, very few organizations are capable of, of doing that sort of collaborative uh, innovation. And the other thing is that a lot, a lot of companies don't understand the value or what some licenses allow for some actions to happen and some, and some other licenses prevent it. So for example, a lot of... Um, conversations around the copyleft versus permissive licenses of which one is more free than other. And I don't, I don't really care about defining which of the licenses more free, a group of licenses more free than another. It, it more interesting to me is what kind of behavior that allows and what kind of modeling of community you can have, uh, what kind of, of go-to-market uh, strategies um, are allowed or prevented for, by picking one of those licenses. That's a more interesting conversation to have for me. I think that the diversity that open source empowers is huge. It's one of the big benefits of open source is when you can have come, someone come along to an open source project, use it in a way that you never thought they would use it before, send changes to add functionality that you didn't even think was possible. I mean, open source is on Mars right now. And I don't think that anyone who was sitting with me back at Linux Expo in 97 thought that was even remotely a possibility. And I think that that's, that's what makes open source so wonderful is that it empowers people to take it beyond the wildest expectations of the original creator. That's so true. I think that's just about all the time we have. Do you have any closing thoughts? I wish we could get more um, general and, and share the understanding of what the open source, what open source means uh, for real. Like we keep on having these conversations and we don't take it for granted. We keep on discussing and, and, um, and, and understand that what the open source definition does and what the open source initiative um, seal of approval on licenses means uh, and the value that it brings so that we have all as a community, we have a shared understanding of that. Yeah, I think my, my takeaway would be to, uh, to look to the existing pool of open source licenses when you're trying to start off on a project and not try to reinvent your own because it is very easy to get it wrong and the repercussions can be very severe. So take advantage of the excellent resources that are out there today uh, to codify existing licenses. Look at the popular licenses. They're popular for a reason. Excellent. Thanks, Stefano and Tom.